purple color is in its present position. This red line is, this small red line is indicating the study area, which red line is also indicated over, over here. So, that suggesting that Indian plate was positioned, the paleo position of the Indian plate was near to somewhere near to equatorial region. So, this, this paleo position of the Indian plate also supports the CIA and EIA values. Trace element uh, data of uh, pups and uh, sandstone at uh, Baranala section and DTS in tabular form. Uh, this is the table showing the trace element data of Bison and Chippat Nala section. Quartz that was identified in the, uh, in the various slides, particularly of monocrystalline nature, with only few polycrystalline grains indicating the presence of granite stick source rock as a source area. Uh, furthermore, the richness of quartz non undulatory or undulatory uh, in the pub sediments also suggests plutonic source. Uh, besides, less volume of uh, lithics and sulfur, and significant amount of clay matrix indicate that the source area had experienced intense chemical weathering. And pub and stone sediments were derived dominantly from Creton interior. Of these samples, as, as, we, uh, as we witnessed in the petrographic slides, they were abundant, they were, uh, the quartz were the dominant min mineral constituent in all, all the slides. So quartz is the leading mineral constituent, other minerals such as feldspar and lithics were. So these, the point analysis of these uh, different constituents was uh, performed that, uh, that uh, 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 supported that these are, this is the uh, calcium carbonate, this is the iron oxide and this is the, these are the clay minerals and this is the quartz grain. So similarly, the section and the values of uh, petrography, XRD and analysis of some selected samples were performed. However, same was uh, uh, performed in detail in nearly all sections, but XRD was performed of limited uh, samples. As you can see that quarinite uh, uh, is shown over here. This uh, red peak is, is of the quartz, which is 59%. Here is the quarinite, 18.9%. Similarly, here, that's why study focuses on pub sandstone, so brief introduction of pub, pub sandstone presented here. The name pub sandstone was introduced by Rendenberg in 1908. Uh, this name was derived from the section along the route of Somaji Trail, raised up near Avne. These are the latitude and longitudes of that uh, uh, type locality. And the formation is 490 meters thick at the type locality, and the age of the formation is upper Cretaceous. In the study area, the succession is uh, predominantly consists of sandstone with the dominant lithology with uh, uh, some conglomerate, conglomerate beds and minor proportion of fine lithologies. Uh, the, the, the identified sandstone is uh, uh, light brown, reddish and pink in color. It is exposed in a strip from uh, uh, Biza Doro in the north and uh, Garwari Doro in the south. Uh, and it is given the Canadian map uh, A35 and uh, uh, 10 by 16 survey of Pakistan to Bushy. Our regional tectonics and structure, uh, the area of investigation lies in the Lucky Range Lower Endless Basin. The Lucky Range has resulted due to the collision along the original and transform, uh, Chaman transfer uh, fault systems. Uh, the, the study sections are exposed in large south trending thrust fault of Lucky Range that runs along the eastern flank. Uh, from almost uh, 55 kilometers from Lucky Shahsadar to Rani Port 4. Uh, these are the uh, maps showing, one of the maps is showing tectonics, uh, tectonic map of Pakistan, the other is a structural map of Southern Nest Basin. The study area is highlighted here, the, the major tectonic element which is the Kheer fold belt and Lucky Range is the part, part of Kheer fold belt. So study area is marked here. And in this, in this map, this study area is marked by this red, red rectangle. Other uh, uh, prominent structures in, the, uh, in this study area are Kheer Depression, uh, Kheer Range, and uh, Jacob was high. Uh, these are the prominent features uh, uh, in, the, in the nearby study area. This uh, slide is showing the generalized study graphic of the study area, where the Fort Monroe is the oldest formation in the study area. And the, on the top of the succession lies the Dada conglomerate. And the lithology is dominantly limestone, conglomerate, basalt, sandstone, and shale. These are the dominant lithologies in the study area. Now, this kind of lithology uh, reveals the certain uh, 
episodes of uh, sea level rise and fall is indicated by these uh, different lithologies that are exposed in, the, in, the, in this area. Besides, this area has one of the uh, importance that this is the only part, this is the only area in the study area in this uh, particularly southern dust basin where this kind of uh, succession exposed that uh, contains the oldest rocks exposed uh, that, that are of Cretaceous age. This is the only uh, area where such sequence is exposed in the southern dust basin in particular. It was uh, the second major cement in, in all uh, uh, analyzed rites. This is the petrographic analysis of Bob Sandstone showing monocrystalline uh, quartz dominantly in this, and here it is a polycrystalline quartz in the lower dust basin after Bodu sands. Uh, the porosity of Bob Sandstone in the discovered fields such as Pirco, Dodak, and Rodo ranges from 5 to 15. Uh, fasces, since my topic is actually lithofasces and progenial. So, Fasces, uh, this term was introduced by Amans Gracely, who is a Swiss geologist. Uh, he, he oriented, he originated this term while he was conducting the uh, uh, stratigraphic correlation along the Jura Mountains in 1839. Since then, this uh, word has got consider, considerable importance. So, Econo, Bio, and Litho, these are three different uh, kinds of fasces. If the, uh, uh, Studies are concentrated with the trace fossils, then that will be considered as econofasces. And if the, uh, the studies are uh, uh, dependent on the uh, fauna and flora, then that will be considered as biofasces. And if, if the studies are uh, focused on the uh, lithostatographic uh, lithologic characters, then that will be lithofasces. So lithofasces is a body of rock with distinct characters. Uh, uh, characteristics uh, related to specific set of physical, biological, and chemical processes. Now, the specific characters includes the composition of that particular rock, the structures within that rock, and the geometry <coughs> of those structures. So, these all parameters are helpful in the identification of certain lithofasces. Lithofasces, the study of lithofasces, when it is coupled with sedimentary provinces studies, it may help us uh, in the uh, uh, identification of uh, depositional pattern as well as hinterland tectonics and basin geometry of that particular area from source to the site of deposition. Provenance is, uh, the term provenance is derived from French provenal meaning to originate or come from. The major aim of the current research is to establish the lithofasces and the provenance of the that is exposed in the Lucky Range, lower at space in the specific objectives of the study are to identify lithofasces based on detailed uh, field investigation for better understanding of sedimentary processes. Recognize mineral content of stone using petrographic uh, techniques, uh, conducting major and trace element geochemical study to infer source rock, uh, paleo, paleo climate, paleo weathering, and redox condition. Uh, further, the chemical and mineralogical classification of sandstone can help understanding the sedimentary processes that were uh, faced by those sediments. Meteorology involvement is divided into two different phases, field meteorology and laboratory work. So in the field meteorology collection of appropriate section, uh, several reconnaissance visits were carried out in the Lucky Range, which resulted in the selection of four appropriate sections. Varanala section, Bulldoro section, Bizanala section, and Chipadnala section. These were the four sections that were selected for this study. Accessibility to these sections, uh, these are a line in the uh, northernmost part. This is a Bizan uh, Mark Marlow here, and the route that leads to this section is connected from uh, Main Indus Highway that is connected from village Butcher Ridge. Uh, that Butcher Ridge is uh, uh, close to Lucky Charter. And DNS, the route for this is connected from the Amri Bridge. And uh, BDS, the route that goes for Burdor section that is from Main Amri Town. And the Chipat section is connected from Main Indus Highway uh, from Sun Town. So, all these sections are approximately 120 kilometers away from uh, main Jam Shoro. And these sections are accessible from main Indus Highway to, to, to the studied uh, sites uh, through 4x4 four four jeeps. In 
field pathology, these uh, uh, steps were taken, section measurement, sampling, geological measurement, and demarcation of lithophysis based on color, composition, structure, and vertical relationship. Uh, in laboratory work, thin section petrography was uh, carried out of uh, 27 appropriate samples out of 68 samples that were collected in, the, uh, in this entire plan. So thin sections were prepared at GAR Geoscience Advanced Research Laboratory in Islamabad and the, these were analyzed at uh, uh, Center for Bureau of Applied, Applied Geology using Leica DM2500 microscope that is available at CJ. In laboratory methodology, the other techniques is the X-ray flow research, X-ray analysis of selected samples. For this procedure, 40 uh, samples were selected for major elemental analysis. 34 samples were uh, prepared for the trace element analysis and press pellets were prepared of all these samples for uh, all the standard procedures. Geopoint method was used for the geochemical analysis. X-ray direction was also uh, performed for uh, some selected samples. Similarly, scanning electron mi microscope was used to identify the shape, size, and effects and identification of certain binders. and. ETS was performed to, uh, uh, to detect the chemistry of those identified windows. All these instruments are available at CPA. Results. Uh, field data results uh, uh, include reconnaissance visits, observation of fields, section measurement, sampling, geological mapping, and identification uh, of different lithophysies. Uh, during reconnaissance, these are the few exposures of sensor. This is uh, section. This is the Karlo section. This is the Karlo Dalmore, where this uh, towards the left side is the pub exposure, where towards the right side is the exposure of Lucky Limestone. And this is the region area uh, where uh, scholars are standing on the contact of the uh, pub and uh, Karlo formation, where this is the uh, Bard Analyze section, uh, which showing the contact of uh, pub and port. Uh, these are the number of samples collected from uh, our sections. Since the Baradala section is the uh, section that comprises the uh, maximum lithophysis that were identified during the field visits, and the uh, section was weighed over there. So, from 312 thickness of Baradala section, 26 number of samples were collected. 16 were collected from 96 uh, meter thick BTS, whereas 12 number of samples were collected from Bison. And 14 number of samples were collected from G. Pandala section. Uh, this is a geological map of the area, uh, which is showing this, this is the exposure of pub sandstone in this uh, green line. Uh, this is the uh, Pandala section, this is DMS, and this is Goro section, and this is G. Pandala section. This is a lithologue showing the thickness of the uh, Mayer section, of the Baradala section. Uh, it is uh, 312 meter thick and these are the uh, certain identified lithophysis and their staking pattern is shown in this lithologue. Uh, this lithologue is showing the Gurdoro section which is 96 meter and these are the identified lithophysis and their staking pattern and these are the uh, uh, names of those identified lithophysis in the Gurdoro section. Uh, this uh, slide is showing the uh, Bidan section and cheaper section. Since these sections consist uh, 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 less volume of lithophysis, and uh, this uh, this section is uh, 64 meter thick Bison and cheaper is only 30 meter thick. Uh, these are the principal identified lithophysis of pop sandstone in all studied sections. They include the horizontally stratified conglomerate, uh, planar cross bedded conglomerate, turf cross bedded conglomerate, planar cross bedded sandstone. Turf cross bedded sandstone, horizontally stratified sandstone, massive sandstone, paleosol, and uh, interlaminated sandstone, siltstone, and mudstone. Horizontally stratified conglomerates, these are the images of horizontally stratified conglomerate, as you can see. Uh, it is massive uh, at places, horizontally bedded, gravel, superbly, and is present in few areas of studied section. Uh, most of the gravel beds are predominantly class supported and, and contain sand matrix. It is characterized with wide range in particle size ranging from granule pebble to cobbles. Uh, the horizontally stratified conglomerate lithophysis of pub sandstone is uh, uh, 
uh, interpreted to have been deposited in uh, rapid uh, depositional conditions uh, uh, supported by high energy flow conditions. Since these are the coarser particles, they, 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 are, they are only kept uh, high energy conditions can carry these uh, uh, such size coarse particles. So high energy fuel environment is interpreted from the uh, coarse grain character. This is the trough cross body conglomerate, uh, and it is, this may see generally appears with mixture of sand and gravel. It is well defined. It has well defined troughs, uh, well defined troughs which are thick to very thick bed, having medium to large co-sets. This is a set as you can see. This about 0 0.5 to 1.5 meter. This, as you can see, this is a, a set GT set which is about uh, one meter thick. They also characterize a wide range in particle size, ranging from granule to pebble to cobbles. Uh, besides, it, uh, it overlies at places on, uh, on an erosional surface and at places it rests on sandy bed. So the uh, GT uh, fasci of uh, pop sandstone is interpreted to have been deposited originally from accretion of bed load and uh, migration of gravelly bed forms, gravelly transfer spars with, with sinuous crests may have originated. Uh, this kind of uh, lithophagy. In addition to that, uh, the filling of minor channels uh, were also responsible for the development of this lithophagy. Then the planar cross buried conglomerate uh, beds are thick to very thick bed uh, that range in thickness from 2 to 10 meters in different parts of the study area. And the set cross bed set thickness here is 0 0.5 to 1.5 meter, rarely more than 1.5 meter are, are also observed. So it is a light brown to red in color, and uh, this is seen from these images. Moderate to poor sorting was observed. Uh, the beds of this unit uh, have uh, 25 to 31 degrees of four sets dip. Four set uh, lamina were dipping at 25 to 31 uh, degrees at different places. The beds of this facie appear as a mixture of sand, also gravel and pebbles, and it lies on the sandy bed with erosional surfaces and it at places it overlies the horizontally stratified conglomeratic beds. The, the uh, GT lithophagy of pop sandstone is interpreted, to, uh, is, is interpreted to have been deposited by the migration of gravelly bed forms that have straight crests. And the, the set thickness observed, which, which is at places more than two meters, that suggests development of these facies in deep and narrow channels. So such kind of uh, uh, sets, as you can see, this, uh, which, are, which are more than one meter in thickness, they indicate that these were deposited in a deep conditions. Uh, they, they were supported by high energy flows and the uh, channel uh, width was, uh, channel was were narrow in, the, in these conditions while this, uh, these fishes were being deposited. Trough cross bedded sandstone, uh, trough cross bedded sandstone and flared cross bedded sandstone. This uh, cross bedding is the, the most abundant uh, sedimentary structure that is preserved in the uh, pub sandstone at various places. So thick to very thick beds ranging from 1 meter to 8, thick eight meter with set thickness ranging from 0 0.5 to 1 meter and it is light brown to red in color with medium to coarse grain and possess moderate to poor sorting. Uh, of poor certain character of grains. This species is most dominant species present in, this, in the study area. It is useful in determining the ancient current directions. It lies on sandy bed with erosional surface at places, and at places it, it overlies the horizontally stratified conglomerate. Uh, since the uh, trough cross bedding is uh, very important in the identification of paleo current trend. So, if, uh, for example, if we are in an area where we don't know what were the di direction of the source and where were these rivers were flowing, so in this case, if we have uh, many, many, if we can make, uh, measure many, many cross bed measurements, then we can uh, come up with a statistical average for the direction of the, uh, that particular river in which it was flowing. So, trough cross bedding is very important in this case. In this case, so there, sh uh, there should be uh, three-dimensional exposures of these turf cross beds, they are essential for this kind of measurement. So interpretation of this we see is the repositioning or migration of transfer spots with sinuous space may have formed this lithophagy in the bending flow conditions of uh, the city area. Then planar cross stratified sensor space, uh, it, it is thick to very thick bedded, uh, uh, ranging from 0 0.5 to 10 meter. Uh, this species is well exposed in different parts of the study area. 
and cross bedded set vary uh, uh, thickness from 5 cm to 1 meter as you can see in this lower photograph there are smaller sets as well and larger sets as well at places uh, there there are very large uh, uh, pair pair cross bed sets were also observed as you can see in this diagram so dip angle of four sets varies from 26 to 32 degrees it is characterized with pink light brown to red in color besides medium to coarse grain this poor grain character was also observed in the uh, while conducting the photographic slides and the hand lens were also used in the field. So the, uh, this SP lithophysis of pub sandstone is, in, is interpreted to have been formed by the migration of transfer spar with straight grace. Massive sandstone for lithophysis is thick to very thick distinctive facies which is generally structure, structureless or only partially structured. Uh, it looks homogeneous and it, it, it lacks uh, any kind of discernible sedimentary structure. Uh, the, uh, this facial is of yellowish brown to reddish brown in color. It is compacted, contains subrounded to subangular uh, grains with moderate to poor sorting. Uh, you can see this, this in this outcrop, you can see that there is no any kind of visible structure is, is, is in this interpretation of lithophacy, petrography, major and trace area, geochemistry. Pop stones. Uh, subsequent conclusions are established in the context of lithophacy and provenance. So, pub sandstone exposed in the Lucky Range comprises of sandstone as a dominant lithology. Based on detailed interpretations, the identified lithophacies were uh, horizontally stratified conglomerate, turf cross bedded conglomerate, planar cross bedded conglomerate, uh, turf cross bedded sandstone, planar cross bedded sandstone, horizontally stratified sandstone, interlimited sandstone, silstone, and mudstone and paleo source. Uh, grain size, angularity, poor to moderate sorting, all these characters is, uh, uh, together with unimodal trough cross bedding and lake of marine fauna suggest the fluvial origin of the formation in the study area. Uh, besides the pub sandstones uh, uh, were deposited in oxidizing condition as suggested by certain trace elements uh, uh, such as nickel, cobalt, vanadium, chromium and scandium. The abundance of monocrystalline quartz, which, uh, which was observed in the, study, uh, the uh, slides, the uh, petrograph slides, indicates the presence of granitic rocks in the source area. The dominance of uh, quartz non undulatory also supports this idea. Water framework analysis is, is, uh, suggests the derivation from cratonic source. And with certain discriminatory diagrams based on the silicon, calcium, magnesium, sodium, potassium. And lanthanum, thorium, lanthanum, scandium, titanium, and zircon suggest that these sediments were derived uh, most, uh, mostly from the acidic source. So, this points to the Indian craton as a source which, is, which lies in the southeast of the study area and is composed dominantly of granitic rocks. The source area experienced moderate to uh, uh, intense chemical weathering in warm humid climatic conditions. The degree of chemical weathering uh, also validated this. Indian plate was positioned near to equatorial region in warm and humid climatic conditions that may strengthen the chemical weathering process in the region. So based on all evidence, it can be con concluded that the source of pub sandstone was Indian Kretan Nangar Parker exposed in the southeast east of the city area. Uh, these are right. and if I XPL, you are a demonstrating that you have the monocrystalline phase and the polycrystalline phase. Uh, how can you explain it, please? Because from this study, you are telling that... Higher degree, that is the reality. But after the completion of the all formalities, which is by the university, that is the... This case will be, I think, be evaluated by the two foreign referees and other things. So the, after these all formalities, Possibly he will be a good sign. I insist that this thesis should be, uh, have some good image in the petroleum industry. While he and I and other companies are working in the area, so it will be beneficial for them. This is the main work of a research. It should be a. It has some economical also aspects. So beside the sedimentological or petrological or geochemical investigation. There are some, uh, say, I not say these are the mistakes, but these are the some old parts. So possibly he will be finalized before the submitting the original or the final version of the thesis. So 
now request our for the dean to come here and say few words. What Duardo is not a geologist but a freshwater biologist. So I hope he will give his kind. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, Professor Dr. Shahid Nazim, Professor Dr. Solangi Sahab, Dr. Lashari Sahab, Dr. Hazim, Dr. Hakro Sahab, and many other uh, faculty members, research scholars, and students. Assalamu alaikum. So, you have witnessed the final PhD seminar that was given by Mr. Thebo, Ulam Sawa Thebo. I think we had very short time, actually, you know, uh, we started a little late uh, due to some, you know, uh, official uh, liabilities. And uh, we should have more time, you know, maybe more than two hours or more, so we could discuss more, you know. So there are so many questions. It's a good sign that most of the faculty members, they have listened carefully and uh, they wanted to give their suggestions uh, to improve the final dissertation. Uh, I think uh, uh, Dr. So from uh, he came all the way from Karachi, the expert today, the expert, and I am happy to see that uh, his uh, young age was spent over here in Jamshoro, not only Jamshoro but in the University of Sin. and uh, because this, his father was a prominent scholar also, so it's very good uh, that we are having Dr. Saab today here. There are so many suggestions you know, given by our uh, faculty members, Dr. Hakro, and uh, especially uh, another chemist from uh, uh, Dr. Ibu Poto, and uh, especially the uh, Dr. Saab, the expert. So I hope that uh, the, the scholar will incorporate all these, you know, uh, most of these suggestions in the final draft of the thesis. In thesis, I have found, you know, a word that is repeatedly uh, written over there, bar nala, and that is written with three R, you know, B-U-R-R-R. -R -R. So I think it should be corrected, because this is repeatedly, not once, you know. So uh, you can go through the thesis and you can find that this is, uh, so in English, I think there are no triple, you know, things, only two. Uh, can be repeated, words can be repeated. Otherwise, the seminar was uh, good and very lengthy also. There are, there are so many slides and, uh, you know, there was a lot of work done by the scholar. Nevertheless, you know, uh, at each and every step, you find, you know, some suggestion because it's not we cannot say that this is the last word and there is no, uh, I mean, addition, there is no suggestion for this word. So suggestions are also uh, there. Uh, the body language of the scholar was uh, good and since, you know, he is the faculty member also, so he presented well the seminar and uh, the findings are actually uh, since you know, Dr. Saab also said that I am not a geologist, but findings are, of course, I think there are some findings which are helpful for the uh, common men. I don't know about common men, but at least for the scientific researchers will get something uh, from the, uh, this uh, research. I also wanted to ask, uh, there should be a message, you know, for a common man also from any type of research which is undertaken because uh, this research is, uh, uh, you know, undertaken, uh, you know, the area is used and the people of the area, they know nothing about this and what are the benefits of these rocks. So if we can give some message 
India, Sindhi or Urdu may for the public. Or even the for general public. So its research is only for the researchers but not for the common man. So common men should get also some information from our research so that they can. You know, when I was uh, working for my PhD in Japan, so I used to go